Hi, I'm Wilson Bickford, professional artist and art instructor. Uh, I've had a fantastic response from my previous YouTube posts that I've had on for the last year. I've had many uh, suggestions and uh, comments and people asking for specific projects and uh, lessons. So I've just posted some more. I hope you enjoy what I've shown you. I wanted to make you aware that I do have a website. It's www.wilsonbickford.com. And I do have some DVDs available on there, one that features an old barn, one that features a sunset. And I do have a new uh, book that's just coming out on the market just now. Um, it's Wildlife Landscapes You Can Paint. It's through Northlight Publishing, which manufactures thousands of art books. This is an acrylic medium. So far, my YouTube lessons have all been in oils. This is an acrylic, and it features animals. And they're all broken down into step-by-step -step fashion. So this is, will be available on my website, also on Amazon.com, and basically worldwide. So thanks for watching my videos. Check out my website and my blog. And I'd love to hear your comments. And I'm sure sometime in the future I'll have some more uh, lessons posted on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Take care. Hi, thanks for tuning in. Um, I thought today I'd show how to do an ocean wave. Ocean waves have a certain anatomy that you have to follow. A lot of my students uh, struggle with those. I know I did when I started painting. Um, so I thought I'd give you a little breakdown if you're going to do a big crashing ocean wave like this. This is a painting I've done recently. It's one that I teach in my workshops. Um, but the main focus of that is that monster wave coming into shore. So I thought today I would give you a quick lesson on the anatomy of, of a wave. Waves have a certain structure. This is the crest of the wave that rides up along the top. This is the eye of the wave. Very important. You want that translucent quality in there like the sunlight is coming behind. This is the dump of the wave where you can actually see it dumping over. And then we've got all the spray and the foam down here. So since I have only just a very few minutes, I'm going to get started on this. I've got a background mocked up here uh, just to get you started so we can put it in relation to uh, a scenery so we know what, uh, what it looks like within the context of a painting. Yours would be different, obviously, but this is just a, a rough background to get us started. I've got ultramarine blue, ivory black, sap green, cadmium yellow pale, and titanium white. I'm going to take the ultramarine blue with some white, a little bit of black. I need a value that is darker than the wave or the water behind. So I'm going to take blue, black, maybe a touch of green for that kind of ocean water feel. Obviously if you're doing the Caribbean you can afford to put a lot of green in there. So I'm going to come up, I'm going to make this dark so you can see it, but you want it dark. I get the outline. This is the crest of the wave that I talked about. This is where the eye will be. This will come down like this. This will be the bottom edge of the foam underneath here. And the dump of the wave will ride along that edge. So if you can get that shape in there, for starters. Now this wave is like a corkscrew motion. It dumps over and goes this way. Waves can go the other way too. Uh, you have to figure out which direction yours is going. So I'm going to pull my strokes down this way. Notice that the brush strokes actually dictate the direction of the wave. And right in here, I'm going to leave a clean spot for right now because I'm going to put the eye up there so we get that translucent quality. But see, all my brushwork is going diagonally downward to the right. These really aren't bad once you try a few of them. You've got to get in there and get your feet wet, as they say. I want to lose this bottom edge and just let it blend out into the existing background paint down here so it just softens out, comes back to a flatter level where it's getting the same light as the background. This right here is in shadow because it's curled up away from the back, the light in the back. So that's why this is darker. Now this is the important part, the, the eye. I'm going to take a number six round brush. You could use a flat brush, any brush that's just a small enough size that's comfortable to work with. I'm going to take some yellow, sap green, and a little bit of white. And I'll make this a little brighter than it would be in reality just so you can see it. But you want that transparency right there. And like I say, that's very yellowish and greenish, a lot more than it would be in reality. 
but I'm doing that so it translates to camera for you. Take something of a stiff bristle brush like a fan and just kind of blend that out so it's a gradual transition from light up in that little crest down into the rest of it. See that's starting to look like a wave already. I'm going to take something even darker than that base tone that I started with on my fan brush. And I'll take a little bit of uh, blue and black, touch of green, won't need a lot of paint, and I'm going to pull that dump of the wave over. I'm trying to get a little bit of a striation in there so I get that rushing water feel. See how that looks like it's got movement to it. It's all in the direction. I've got a can of odorless uh, paint thinner right here. I'm just going to stick my brush into that can and rinse that out. I will come back with some white, a little bit of the ultramarine blue. I'm going to put in some shadowed foam first, and then I'll come back with the highlight. And you can gray that just slightly with a touch of black if you prefer. But I just want some things as a shadow tone for white, kind of a blue. And I'm just going to touch on and stab on a little bit of foam right along, riding on the crest of that wave and it'll cut right down in front like this. So that dump is coming over the back side. And over here you're going to see it kind of boil and churn and splash. So I just kind of tap in with the corner of the brush, getting a random shape. I will come back with some pure white. And depending on the direction of your light source, you want to have it a little brighter on one side or the other. I'll also add a little bit of that white right into the foam area. Now it needs more movement down in here, so I'm going to take my number six round brush, or like I said, you could use a comparable size flat brush. This is a number six round. But I'm going to take some uh, white and a little touch of that bluish tone that I had thin it with the paint thinner and I'm going to lay in some foam patterns. So these are just little patterns of foam that lay on top of the water. The direction of these is very crucial, critical. Notice how it's all going that way. They need to be varied. They're going to be more upright here in the center area and as they go off to the right they become flatter. The direction and how these lie is absolutely crucial. So pay close attention to the way, the way I'm putting these in here in the direction. Now these will look a little harsh probably. So we can tone those down a little bit with a nice softer brush. But again, I'm pressed for time here. You'll have a lot of time at home to fidget with this which will make it easier for you. If I take a just a typical one inch brush, foliage brush like an Alexander style or Ross, I can soften this out a little bit, which makes it look a little more like it's moving. Um, drag it in the direction that it is flowing. You can smear it too much and lose it completely, so I'm just kind of doing a little bit at a time here. Don't get too heavy handed all at once. Now see, that's looking pretty good. It's starting to look like a wave. I can actually enhance that by coming back and putting a few touches on top of this white foam where it's a little whiter and the uh, darker stuff that I put in previously will look like it's more in shadow. But It's all about the shape of these waves and the anatomy. Once you learn that, the crest of the wave, the eye of the wave, the dump of the wave, everything gets much easier. So don't be afraid to give this a shot. I've got one more quick little thing. If I take some white on my fan brush and thin it down with the paint thinner, I'm going to spatter, which means I'm going to put some spray coming off this foam. I just release the bristles and let them flip and spray some dots so it gives that water movement. Is that cool or what? You can do this. It's not that hard. Check this out. Check out my other videos on YouTube as well as my website. See you next time.